That sure looks like a lot of brake fluid down there on the ground. That ain't good. All right. <laughs> I just found more work. All right. Hey, folks. My name is Dave. Welcome to our shop here at NTD Racing. Behind me is Honcho, our 1978 Jeep J10 Desert Race Truck. We just got done racing the Baja 1000. And if you watch one of my previous videos, I think one of the best modifications that I made for the performance of Honcho was adding tap shift. We basically modified our 6L90 transmission to accept tap up and tap down. And you can check that out if you're interested in putting it on one of your trucks for some reason. But anyways, the way that that went down is what I did is I added some buttons onto our steering wheels where you can either push the button with your thumb to either tap up or tap down. And the guys were like, this is the best thing ever, but we want more. They wanted, they're like, we want paddles because we don't want to basically let go with your thumbs because you lose control of the wheel. We want to be able to let go with maybe one finger and hit some paddles. I was like, man, paddles are expensive. So I went and did a little looking and uh, I found these. I think these are from like a Nissan Altima. These are little paddle switches. It's just a momentary on off switch, but it, it wouldn't fit right on there. So I have to make a mount. So. What I'm going to show you today is how I use my 3D printer, my Creality Ender 3 3D printer to design with Fusion 360 in three dimensions to make a mount to make that switch fit onto our steering wheel. I think you'll like it. So this will be a perfect example of rapid prototyping to make sure that the guys on our race team get the things that they want. Anyway. You know, nobody's asking me what I wanted for Christmas. And, uh, you know, I was thinking about it. Like if I could have anything I wanted for Christmas, I think it'd be new tires. All right, Merry Christmas. Check these things out. These are the Milestar Patagonia Mud Terrain Black Label tires. Over here, we have a 37-12-5 R17. That's the same size we've been using so far on Honcho. We'll be putting those things on and these hopefully we'll see three races this year. And then over here, the other big daddy, these are the 40 13.5 R17s going on the new build. We're calling it Honcho 2 right now. I'm not sure what we'll eventually call that. They all find their own names at some point, but that's where these tires will uh, be going. I can't wait to get to work on that. We got a lot of stuff coming up this year as we do Min 400, Baja 400, Baja 1000, and then all the testing in between, we'll be putting these tires to the test. But first, let's go ahead and get back to this project. Let's get on the Fusion 360 and start making the mounts for these steering wheel tap shift. All right, let's get to a little bit of Fusion 360 to make this part, which will hold the tap shifters for our steering wheel. And, you know, just to get started on this, uh, as far as a little bit of theme, when I'm doing uh, some of the 3D Fusion 360 is, and this kind of comes from our brother Mark, is you can either do additive or subtractive you can either like make a block and cut style stuff out of it michelangelo style or you can just like build stuff like a building kind of style and we're going to do a little bit of both today and you, maybe you'll just get a couple techniques if you're building something yourself it doesn't have to be a 3d printed part but you can kind of get the idea as i build some something here so i'm going to go ahead and just because i normally just get started sketching on the x and y axis i'm going to go ahead and do that and I'm going to start with the, the, the part, the block that interfaces, I guess, with the bolt into the tap shifter. And I guess, you know, just for lack of a better idea, I always like going with this center point rectangle. And I go with the center origin. And just it just makes it easier, I think, just because it's easy to pull dimensions off of that. And this thing is going to be 1.2 inches across the bottom. And then I'm hit tab one inch tall, and that should do it for this thing. And that's kind of where this thing's going to sleeve into. Now there's a couple dimensions I already pulled off of the part, and so I'm going to start plugging those in here. And let me see, um, off of the bottom center, I'm going to make another center rectangle, which is just over a half inch by three quarters of an inch. But to give myself a point to work off, I'm going to go ahead and turn on construction lines realize a construction line is something <clears throat> you use for reference and it's not going to use that later on while you're trying to you know cut it or build it or construct it it's just it's an invisible line to the computer or to the manufacturing thing that that allows you to uh, basically reference off of so there's my invisible line and now I want to do another center rectangle off of that point not a three-point rectangle I want a center rectangle off this point and now this one is going to be 
the width would be 0.56, which is actually considerably wider than the thing that I'm uh, using. I'm going to go ahead and over here and turn construction lines off. Realize you can do that while you're actually working on the part. It doesn't matter. And then the height of this thing is going to be 0 0.75 uh, inches. There we go. And that should put it just a tad above the bottom of this thing. And that is by design. So now I've got this part. Now let's go into the additive versus subtractive. You know, and actually there's a hole that goes in here. In here and I might as well put it in while I'm here. Again, I'm going to put a construction line in. We're going to go from the bottom. And it's going to go up. Oh, you know what? I made an error there. Let me see something here. This one's going to go up point. Actually, I'm going to go back and I'm going to put that thing in later. So I'm going to escape out of that. I made an error. This should be 0.375 right here, this number right here. So I'm going to double click on that and it's going to let me change it, which is pretty cool. 0.375. And that's going to move the whole box down. And now you see there's no gap down there. And again, kind of by design. Anyway, uh, now I'm going to go ahead and construction line this thing again. And I'm going to go off the center bottom. I'm going to say, now this is going to be 0.4 inches there. I'm going to go hotkey C, turn off construction lines. I'm going to put a hole. And that's going to be a 0.25 inches hole uh, right there. So cool. These are the three things that I'm going to either extrude and make bigger or cut out. And we'll need to do both of those right now. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to hotkey E and extrude this thing. And what I want to extrude is this whole part. And let's make that, it's going to be 0.5 inches. Boom. Inches. <laughs> now, realize as soon as I, and I, let me go back and I'm going to show you what, what just happened here. Because um, this, this is a good point, a learning point here. I'm going to hit Control Z. I'm going to take away that extrusion. Realize that what I have is I've got one sketch which I have created. Now, when I go and I hit Hotkey E, and I find the thing that I want to extrude. I might as well, you know, I'll extrude all of them right now because I'm going to do a cutaway in a second. When I say extrude, I'm going to hit 0.5 inches for the extrusion. Watch over here as soon as I hit enter. I'm going to hit enter and bodies is going to come up. Boom, there's bodies. So I have now created a body. And in Fusion 360, you have, at least for what I'm doing today, I have sketches and bodies that I'm con concerned with. So there is the body. Now, where did the sketch go? Because I look over here, I made a sketch. I know I got another part in there. Where did that go? Well, realize as soon as you make something, a lot of times it turns the sketch off. So you got to turn that sketch back on. And now I want to extrude that sketch. And it doesn't matter what side it's on, I guess. I can extrude that. And I want to cut into the panel 0.3 inches. And this time I want it to cut. Now, here is another good point is you got to make sure that when you hit that hotkey E for extrusion, that you look over here and pay attention to what you're doing because you have a couple of different options because you might want to cut, but the thing's going to join or make a new body or something like that. So you got to make sure you have it selected to what you want it to do. In this case, yep, I do want it to cut. Uh, and I'm going to hit, hit OK. So there, I'm going to turn my sketch off just so I can kind of take a look at what I got. And that indeed is the piece that I want. Okay, I'm going to go to the side of this thing now. Now I'm looking at it from the side. Now what I want to do is when I want this tap shift switch to be oriented about 20 degrees down. And so I can create another plane. And what I found is easier for me to do is just to hit the hotkey M to tell it to move. Select this thing. Now it tells me I've, I've selected a body. And then now I'm just going to go ahead and rotate it. And I'm going to rotate this thing to 20 degrees. And now I've got it at the, the position I want. And what makes this thing nice is now my X and Y axes and my, those planes are still normal. I don't have some really crazy plane going off there. Realize I could create another plane and work off that. But this just seems like it's a little bit easier for me uh, to do. So I'm hit OK. And now this thing is kind of off there in space. But when I hit right up here in the top right corner, it goes back to the orientation that this thing's going to be in. It makes sense to me as I continue uh, making it. So all right, so now I'm ready to kind of make the rest of the structure around this thing. So I know that the part I'm going to make after that whole thing it, it sleeves into Let's see, I'm pulling out the calipers here, and it extends out. 
and I support it maybe by about 1.2 inches will be pretty good. So what I want to do is I want to sketch, and now I want to sketch on this face right here, and I'm going to extend a line from here out 1.2 um, inches. So I'm going to make sure construction lines are off. I'm going to go the same degrees, 1.2 inches. And then from there, you know, I, I just wanted to, to come down and engage the rest of this thing. So it really doesn't matter. I'm going to I'm going to cut, trim this thing down a little bit later, but right now I just want this part to extend down. Now the, the bottom of this thing, I want it as close to the steering wheel as I possibly can to keep that switch close to my hand. So it's going to go right to the tip down here and then it's going to come out for just a random distance again. And then let's go, let's say a point what's this distance right here so i'm gonna go from there and come across there and i'm gonna go from there to there i'm gonna keep cruising across and i'm gonna go from there to there and you're like this is pretty random what he's doing i'm like yeah it sure is i'm just kind of trying to give myself a base to work off of here so there and there to there and that's kind of the base that kind of holds it all together and this will make a little bit more sense as I start putting this whole thing together so the distance I want from here to where the the my screw is going to go is or about to the end is about 0.5 inches so I'm going to just go ahead and make a construction line which will define for myself what the the end is so we'll say 0.5 and I'm just going to take the end of this thing off there we go. Now that's the front of that's kind of the way I want it to look. And then from the from this point all the way to the other end is going to be 3.2 inches. So I'm just going to, again, construction line. It'll make it easy. 3.2. Oh, it's off the end. That's okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and continue these lines. So I'm going to hit the hotkey L. I'm going to start from here. I'm going to go vertically to this line. And then there, and then back to the beginning there. There. Now that part's there. I'm going to go ahead and trim this line. And that is one full piece. All right. So now I have all of the parts that I want. And you're like, well, that doesn't look, look really cool. I'm not sure what you're trying to do, Dave. Well, let me show you. Let me trim up some of these lines that I don't want to have in the drawing. And that should be all of them. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to hotkey E. I'm going to extrude this thing, and I'm going to extrude all these parts, and I'm going to drag it all the way over to match up with the other side of this block. Make sure it is. And this is where it's important, like I said before, to make sure that this says what you want. In this case, I want it to join and make that whole thing one continuous block. And there you go. I'm going to say, OK, join. And then now this is one continuous part. And you can kind of see how that that switch is going to go ahead and sleeve inside there and be bolted in. Now let's give this thing something to bolt it down with. So we'll start from the top. I want to do another construction line. I want it to be in the center here. And I want to come down 0.25 uh, inches from there. And then I'm going to do a couple things. Is I want a hole at that point. Turn the construction lines back off because it's actually going to cut this hole. And I'm using these 1024 screws with some bolts on there or some nylock nuts on them. They've been working pretty good on most things I've been working on. And that's about a 0.175. I'm just going to make that a 0.2 hole um, just so I can I have a little bit of wiggle room there. And then I'm going to go over here also to this polygon. And I'm going to say I want a circumscribed polygon and I want it to be a six side which six sided which it is let me orient it this way and these nuts in diameter they're 0.37 I'm gonna make it a point what point one nine which now what I can do is I should be able to extrude that bolt just a little bit and so that it sits down in there and then I don't want to put a, a wrench on the other side to, to grab that bolt so I'm gonna extrude both of those so let me see. So first thing I will do is say hotkey E. I'm going to extrude this one. I'm just going to cut it through the whole 
surface and I'll say OK. And then I'm going to turn that sketch back on. There we go. And I'm going to hotkey E. I'm going to extrude this one. And let's just go cut it in there. Point one. Let's say enter. There we go. And now that bolt will sit in there and hopefully it'll grab. And I want to put a screwdriver on their side when I go ahead and, and screw that thing down. And now let's go and do the other side. The same kind of thing here. I'm going to sketch. I'm going to sketch on that plane right there. I'm going to start with a line off the center. This should be a construction line. I'm going to go 0.25, enter. I'm going to put a circle on that. I'm just going to be the construction lines off again. 0.2, enter, and then that same polygon. Make sure I got oriented the way I want. 0.19, orient it this way. There we go. Then hockey E extrude. I'm going to extrude this thing all the way through the whole length. OK. Turn the sketch back on. Hockey E extrude. And extrude this one now. Um, yeah, point 0.1. All right. So I made those holes just a little bit bigger. Um, and I also just made the whole base just a little bit thicker. Just because I don't want to break this thing. I think it's a pretty critical part. All right, so I got this thing's looking pretty much ready to go. It does look a little bit blocky, doesn't it? And so it sure would be nice to make this thing look like really cool, like all that other stuff that you see people make on Fusion 360. And I think that that's actually pretty easy to do. Let's try it. Let's make sure I can do all the stuff I need to do. I can put a screw right in there, I think. So I think this will work out pretty good. Now let's just go ahead and soften all the parts up and then we'll put it into the plasma cutter. So this really cool feature right here allows us to do that. So um, and you just start selecting parts. So I'm going to select all these lines. And when I push that in, all of a sudden that becomes a softened edge. I'm going to hit enter and I'm going to do that all the way around the whole thing. And you're like, man, that's how they make that stuff so cool. So that side, that side, and that side. Same kind of thing. And right angles create stress concentrations. So you can even do it on the inside of things. And you can see it still maintains that extrusion, which is really cool. So there. Okay, there was a healthy dose of making some fillets. Let's go ahead and now take this thing and put it into our 3D printer and make it. So first thing we gotta do is we need to save it. So Fusion 360 will not export anything until you save it first. So I'm gonna make this thing tap, tap, shift, out. And now it will be saved. All right, so now that we have saved it as tap ship mouth, now what we need to do is we need to export this file as a .stl. So I need to go in here, say, where is it, .stl? STL, and make it in some kind of, a, somewhere you'll be able to find it later on. And for me, I have my folder that's called 3D printing. Or there we go. So I will save it there and export it. Now it's going to take a couple minutes to export it. All right, now that this file is completed downloading to my folder, I got to go to that folder I saved it on, take the file now, and then I'm going to drop it on this program here, which is called Cura. This is by Ultimaker. And this is like the same as uh, Fusion 360 or Sheet Cam is the cam for the plasma tables. Cura is the cam or what's going to make the G code for the 3D printer is just called something different. It's pretty easy to use. And obviously I don't want to print it like that. So I'm going to select the part. I'm going to tell it to rotate the part and I'm going to say rotate it and it should rotate it to pretty much snapping it to flat and then it's going to drop it on the table there. So that's how I want to do that. 
I want to make multiples of these. I'm going to right click on it, say multiples. I'm going to make one more. And there they are right next to each other. And now I can move it around on my, my table to put it in the center. I also like to keep them close. It gives the head a little bit less distance to move before it starts printing on the next thing. And then now what I'm going to do is let's see how long it takes for the G code to produce and how long it's going to take for this thing to, to um, make the part. A couple of the features up here that we're looking at is what I'm, what I'm concerned with is called the infill. And I'm going to go 100% for this because I want this to be a totally strong part. And it says it's going to take about nine hours to make, and it's going to make supports in there. And what supports mean, um, so I'll show you a couple of things. What supports mean, if I say preview this thing, and then if I kind of zoom in, what supports are going to be is this stuff in here, because the, the printer can't just print up here in space. What it will do is as it prints along there, it's going to print something like a structure in there that I'll have to take out later on um, such that this thing doesn't sag once it starts to basically shoot the glue gun all up in there. So that's what that means. What I can also do is let's say I take this thing down to say a 20% infill and I slice it again. What you'll find is it'll take a much less time to make the same part. It's just that the problem is, is now the inside of that part is going to be completely hollow mostly. It's only going to be 20% material with a solid outside. It uses this material. And if it isn't a structural part, you know, or a part that you're going to need to, need to be strong, and this works fine, but if it's something that you need some strength, I don't need to do that. So there it is, less than half the time there. But as you can see, as I go down through this, and you can kind of see that honeycomb structure that it's making inside there uh, while it's printing. So I don't want that. I'm going to 100% for this part, I'm gonna say slice it. It's gonna take about nine hours. So what that means, I'm gonna start the printer. I'm gonna to go to bed when I wake up in the morning, the parts will be done. And that's pretty cool, that's pretty awesome. I didn't go to a store and buy these things or anything like that. That being said, I think I bought this uh, Ender 3 by Creality for about 200 bucks. The filament's like about $20. The software is all free, Fusion 360 is free. So if you want this in your own shop, check out our store and you can see, um, you can see uh, all this stuff. I'll have a link for it, and you help us out whenever you click on one of my Amazon links. I'm an affiliate, and it kicks us back some dollars. So I have my disk in here that I'm going to put back into the Creality Ender 3. So I'm going to say Save to Removable. It's going to save it to that. I'm going to eject it. Now let's go ahead and put it into the 3D printer. I'll give you a quick little tutorial on how I set this thing up, and we'll let this thing uh, print this part out. Okay, here we go. Setting this thing up. So turn the power on. What I print on is a little piece of glass. I find that it's the flattest thing you can use and it makes your prints really nice. To make the print stick to the glass, I use this crazy art washable glue stick. Again, all this stuff will be on our Amazon page if you're interested in this kind of stuff. There you go, put some crazy art glue stick on there. It doesn't matter really how it's on there. Just put it on and that will make the filament stick to this thing. I'm going to use some alligator clips now to clip this thing to the base. And there should be a fourth one here. There we go. It's underneath a GoPro. All right. Now that that's on there, I'm going to do a couple of things. I'm going to go over to this screen here. I'm going to hit go to prepare. I'm going to tell it to preheat the PLA. And that's going to get the table and the nozzle to start heating up. I'm going to go back to prepare and now I'm going to tell this thing, I want you to go to your zero point. So go back to your home, if you will. Uh, and it's going to go, it's going to zero everything using the squat switches that are on the, or the limit switches, whatever, whatever you want to call them that are in the machine. These happen to be the same limit switches. I think that they use on the Crossfire XR and this thing's been hitting them like a million times. So I'm pretty confident that, that those things will last for a long time. Now that it's there, what I really need to do, one of the most important things I say is first is get something flat, like a piece of glass. Make sure you have something so that your filament will stick to it. And then second is you have got to um, flatten your bed or re basically calibrate it to the nozzle and the gantry every single time. So I'm hitting disable the steppers. I'm bringing the, the table out and now I'm just going to use a piece of regular printer paper underneath the nozzle. What I'm doing is I'm moving it back and forth to see that there's just a little bit of resistance. And then there's these wheels underneath here. I'm moving back and forth until I just feel a little bit of resistance. 
and then I move it to the next corner. And again, there's a lot of resistance on that one, so I'm going to loosen that one up a little bit just until I can feel it just dragging. That feels just about right there. Go back to this corner. And if you don't do this every single time, and then, you know, one of the, one of the times you're going to have a, a bad print or something like that, you're not going to catch it, and you're going to come back, and then it's going to look like a tumbleweed on your desk or something like that. So that's pretty good. I might go around each corner one more time to make sure I got it all right. I want to still feel just a little tight. There we go. Back in that corner. Let me tighten it up just a little bit. There we go. Cool. That's all good to go. This thing's ready to print. So now I'm going to go back to uh, print from my card. And there's my tap shift mount. I'm going to hit that. And now the bed is going to start heating up. First, it's going to uh, first it's actually going to heat the nozzle up to 50 degrees. The bed to 50 degrees C. Then it'll heat the nozzle up to 200 degrees C, and then it'll be off to the races, and we'll watch what it does then. All right, now this thing is at 200 degrees, and it's ready to print. It's going to rehome itself one more time, go back to all of its zero points, and then it's off to the races for the other uh, print. The first thing that it is going to print during this whole process is one line down the extreme edge. And I think this is just a, a nozzle clearing, so it's basically just getting anything out of the nozzle and getting that thing warmed up and making sure that there's filament there when it starts to, no kidding, print the real part. After that, it's gonna go and start to print the perimeter of whatever the whole entire print is gonna be. So in this case, it's, it's making a perimeter moat, if you will, around both of the parts. And after it does that, then it's just gonna start printing the parts. Let's watch it do that. So this is what you really want to watch is if the print is going to go bad, it will usually show you right here because this is the extremes of everywhere this thing is going to print. So if it's going to lift off of that glass and not stick to the surface, now is when it's going to happen. So if as long as this line looks pretty good and to me, it looks like it's going to be a good print, then you can probably maybe watch it put its first layer down and then go to bed. I'm going to go to bed. It'll take nine hours. I'll come back and this will be ready in the morning. All right, so the uh, the printer is off to the races, and you don't need to sit there and watch it the whole time. Again, I, I go to bed, and it, it prints out overnight, and I come back, and then nine hours later, I got this part that would not have existed if I didn't know how to use a little bit of simple techniques in Fusion 360 and this $200 3D printer. And, uh, and so here I am taking them off the glass, and you can see the glue that's underneath that was holding that thing to the glass. Now, what's really cool about this is that now I have this rapid prototype piece and i'm telling you that i probably the the filament that i use was probably on the order of maybe 40 cents of filament to make that piece that never existed before it's something that you know you wouldn't have had unless you've got stuff like a 3d printer or somebody else to make this for you i'm not sure how much it would cost to have somebody three do the cat for this but you made this yourself for about 30 to 40 cents and then now you have tap shift on your steering wheel or whatever it is you have you got the rocket for your child or something like that so I think it's really cool the capability that you get with a 3D printer. If you don't have one, again, about 200 bucks once you add it in filament and that kind of stuff, maybe $220 or something like that. It's really, I think, not too much. And I've made so many parts. The other thing is that I was really impressed by as I made this. And again, since I, I had to make a couple of them because the first one, the, the bolts didn't line up and there was a little bit of interference. And that's what, so this is maybe my third prototype that's finally going on here. But So I had a couple of extras that I just could play with and just try to break. And I will tell you, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of a, I'm, my hands are pretty strong and I could not break the piece. They are, it impressed me how durable the PLA plastic is. And in fact, you see guys who are making dimple dyes with the PLA. If you are interested in one of these 3D printers or the other things that I'm using to make this 3D printer work, there will be a link in the description below for our Amazon page. And you click on that. And again, like all affiliate pages, like Amazon stuff is, it costs you exactly the same as it would cost you, except that uh, when you buy through my affiliate link, I get a couple dollars back and I use those dollars to pay for stuff like our tap shift or my 3D printer or the tires on our, on Honcho. Uh, but anyway, getting back to the, uh, the part, getting this thing finished, I think it really went together. Well, uh, I got to do a little bit of wiring, but now here we go in honcho and we're going to do a little test drive. Now I'm doing a little test drive down my driveway and just up my side street and back. And just to be kind of kind to my neighbors, I'm just being taken really easy. I want to be a good neighbor. 
Uh, but tomorrow we're taking this thing out to Akatia Well, so you can expect the next video to be us really running it, testing out the tap shift, testing out the new Milestar Patagonia mud terrain tires, which are awesome. Uh, and we'll see you on that video. Well, I hope you were able to take something out of that video. Some of the things I think are really important are knowing when to use the tools of either extruding and taking something out of an object or extruding to add something into an object while you're making things in three dimensions. And then just also pay close attention whenever you're doing an extrusion, you know, whether you're making a new body, whether you're joining something or if you're cutting. And if you pay attention to those things, I think it'll alleviate a lot of the frustration that people have using Fusion 360. Well, if you like what you saw there, that's what we do on this channel. We try to come up with budget-minded solutions to really expensive problems. That's how we built this $20,000 desert race truck named Honcho. We're about to race it in our fourth race at the mid 400 in March. I hope you will follow us all the way to that. In addition to that, tomorrow I'm going to buy new shocks for Honcho 2. That's going to probably be the biggest part of that build. I'm looking really forward to going out and getting some more King shocks from Down South Motorsports. With that, please consider hitting the like and subscribe, ringing the bell for notification of future episodes. If you have a comment, I will answer all those. I read all of them or I'll answer it in my next video. Until then, I'll see you next week. Take care of yourself.